Okay, so next thing is a full ladder. Now, what is full ladder? Full ladder is actually giving a chance to us to add uh, three values together. This is a typical uh, combinational logic circuitry we use in arithmetic logic units and we use in DSP processors and so on. This is the fundamental logic block. Now, it says there are Boolean functions for the outputs using NAND. In addition, implement some output using XOR. Okay. Now, first we have to understand the full ladder. So we have to find the relationship between inputs and outputs. Let's say I have got input A, B, C, and the output. This C is actually carry in that we generally use. And we have got sum and carry out. So three inputs, eight possible combinations. And that's our eight possibilities. Now, based on these relationship, what we have to do, we have to find out our outputs. Okay, let's use red for the sum. Right, sum, you are adding A plus B plus C in. Zero plus, zero plus, zero. Sum is zero. Is there any carry out? No, that's also zero. Zero plus, zero plus, one. Sum is one, carry out, which means carry, no carry. 0 plus 1 plus 0, it's also 1, no carry. 0 plus 1 plus 1, it's 2, so sum, so 1 plus 1, it's 2, so 0, and then we have got carry, which is 1, 0, if you do remember from chapter 1. So that means sum is 0, carry is 1. Then 1 plus 0 plus 0, sum is 1, carry is 0. 1 plus 0 plus 1, sum is 0, carry is 1. 1 plus 1 plus 0, sum is 0, carry is 1. And 1 plus 1 plus 1, sum is 1, carry 1, because it's 3. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, so 1, and then carry 1. We have got sum and carry both ones. So this is the relationship between inputs and outputs for the full ladder. Now, we have to take each of these individually, these columns, and we, have, we can optimize it. We can try to optimize it. Now, if we look at the sum, as it is a three input, I can have a Carnot map with eight squares. So zero, 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 one, 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 zero. I can have A, B, carry in, zero, one. Now, min term zero is zero. Min term one is one. Min term two is one. Min term three is zero. Min term four is one. Min term five is zero. Min term 6 is 0, and min term 7 is 1. Now, as you can see, we cannot combine any of the ones together. Now, what this function? If you do remember from the previous chapter, this is like there is 1, there is 1, there is 1, and there is 1. When you look at the inputs over here, odd number of 1, odd number of 1, odd number of 1 and odd number of 1. This is a typical XOR implementation. So I can say that sum is equals A XOR B XOR C. That's my implementation. And then I have to do the same thing for um, carry, which I don't have enough space over here. 
but I'll maybe, no, I cannot fit it over here. I'm just going to move to another page, create a K map. Again, eight zero 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 one 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 zero zero one A B carry in. So the carry out, uh, min term zero is zero, min term one is zero, min term two is zero. So zero, zero, and zero. Min term three is one, four is zero, and the rest is one. Min term three is one, four is zero, and the rest are all ones. Now, if I combine, I can combine these two, which is BC. I can combine these two, which is A and C. And of course, I can combine these two, and that's going to be A and B. So I can say that my C out is AC or BC or AB. Now, as it says, using NAND gates, we can implement this function using NAND gates. And we can just replace the end gates with the NAND gates, and then we can have another NAND gate at the output. So I can rewrite this as AC prime. dot bc prime dot ab prime and of course all of them are NAND together and this will be the implementation so let's draw that let's draw these implementations so xor sum is xor so i can have a B. Normally, we use two stages for XORs rather than having a three input XOR. As a cost wise, it's more efficient. So, this is our sum. And the C out, it is going to be NAND, another NAND, another NAND, and they are all NAND together, which will be. C out. So you can drop down A from here and C, A and B and uh, B and C. Okay, so that's all possible, and this is what we are getting. So this is a typical implementation of a full ladder that you can find in any logic block as a arithmetic logic unit, as a addition and subtraction. Okay, you can find a similar truth table. They just wrote down the C in at the beginning, but it doesn't matter. Then when you place the uh, Carnot maps, this is what you are going to get, the similar Carnot maps. Some is just the XOR of those, which we can combine, which we cannot combine it. Now, another important logic block, which we especially use with the memories, it's a decoder. Now, what is a decoder? Now, for example, in memories, we use decoders in order to decode the address and find out uh, the memory location. Now, that means uh, it's a conversion of an n-bit input to an n-bit output. Now, this n is between n and 2 to the power n. So, the typical decoder is actually a combinational circuit with n-bit binary code applied at inputs, which we are ex expect expecting uh, turning on one of the outputs at a time. Okay, so what is this actually? Let's say I have got input A, okay? And this input A can activate two outputs, okay? So D0 and D1. Now, when A is zero, D0 will be activated, D1 will be zero. When A is one, 
D0 will be 0, D1 will be activated. Okay, so this is actually giving us with the one input A, we are getting two outputs. Now that outputs the relationship when A is 0, D0 is 1. When A is 1, D1 is 1. So that means when A is directly connected, that will be D1. And the output D0 is just inverse of A. And this is known as 1 to 2 decoder, which we are activating one line at a time. And the block diagram of it, you can just have an input A, D0, and D1. Okay? So this is 1 to 2 decoder. We can also implement 2 to 4 decoder because if you have one input, that means 2 to the power 1, you'll get two outputs. If you have two inputs, 2 to the power 2, four outputs. If you have three inputs, 2 to the power 3, eight outputs. So 3 to 8 decoders, um, 4 to 16 decoders, and it goes like that. Again, we are using powers of 2. Right, 2 to 4 decoder. That means I have got A and B as an input. D0, D1, D2, D3 are the outputs. When we have two inputs, four possible combinations, and each of them are activated, each of the outputs are activated based on these combinations. Okay. Now, when both are zero, so I wrote it D0 to D3. You can write it as D3 to D0. It doesn't matter. The point over here is we are activating one bit at a time. So when both 0, D0 is activated, others are 0. When it is 0, 1, D1 is activated, other ones are 0. 1, 0, D2 is activated, others are 0. And then... 1, 1, D3 is activated, and the other ones are 0. You can see a ladder shape over here that we are activating one input at a time. So how can we implement this decoder? Now, it's actually pretty simple when you look at the relationship over here. When both are 0, D0 is activated. Uh, 0, 1, D1 is activated. 1, 0, D2 is activated. 1, 1 is D3 activated. So I can have input A, input B. Let's say two straight lines. And I can also have the inverted version of that on both sides. So this is A prime and this is B prime. Now, what I'm looking at is the combination of these are going to give me or activate one of those outputs. So when I have got a0 and B0, then A prime and B prime, I can use an end gate and D0 will be activated. A0, B is 1. D1 is activated. A is 1, B is 0. D2 is activated. And when both are 1, D3 is activated. Okay, sorry about my drawing, but this is how it looks like as a inside of the decoder. You can actually see a proper pictorial form in the slides, which looks like this. Okay, so this is a simple decoder, which we have two to four line decoder, we call it, and you can just use a block diagram if it is required. Now, one good application of the decoder is we can actually use a decoder to implement a function as well. So, for example, implement a 1-bit full adder using 3 to 8 decoder with inverted active low outputs and two NAND gates. Active low output means, um, if you do remember from chapter 1, normally we are using active high. 
So what is active high? Logic one is high. Logic zero is low in active high. But in active low, it's other way around. Logic one is low and logic zero is high. And this can be obtained using NAND gates, which is just the inverted version of the end gate. Okay, now we have to find the three bit full adder relationship and we need to have three to eight decoder. Three to eight means we need to have three inputs, again, ABC, like we had got it in a uh, full adder. And we have got eight outputs, four, five, six, seven, Let's put that in between. And these are all D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, and D7. Now, what is the relationship? How I am going to get that? One bit full adder has got three inputs. Three to eight decoder has got three inputs. If I go back to the one bit full adder truth table, now, for the sum, these are the min terms, right? So maybe I can write those min terms somewhere here with a different color. So which ones are activated? Min term one, min term two, min term four, and min term seven. One, two, four, seven. So for sum, we actually need sum of min terms one, two, four, and seven. And for C out, we need the sum of the min terms, min term three, min term five, min term six, and min term seven. So three, five, six, and seven. Now these are our full other outputs, right? Which are activated as a sum and C out. Now, if I go to the decoder implementation, which I will write that down. So sum A, B, C. Is some of the min terms. One, two, four and seven. And C out, A, B, C, sum of them in terms, three, five, six, seven. Now, the min terms are between the range zero to seven. So based on the eight possible combinations over there. And my decoders are also giving eight outputs. One thing that we need to be careful, we have to have inverted active low outputs. So that means this decoder has got inverted active low outputs, which we are having in NAND gates rather than end gates in there. So that means these are inverted. Now, which ones are going to be activated? It totally depends on these min terms. And they are actually going to be also NAND together. Okay, let's start with the sum. So sum, I need a NAND gate. It's one, two, four, seven. One, two, four, and seven. So active low outputs of the decoder are NAND together to get the sum implementation. And let's change the color. C out. We have a three, five, six, seven. So three, five, six, and also seven. And this will give us the C out. So this is how we can use a decoder um, with some NAND gates to implement the 
full adder because this 3 to 8 decoder is it is an active low as you can see it's inverted so and instead of ones we have got zeros as a ladder shape and the other ones are not active actually as we are using active low outputs this is what you are going to get and the final implementation based on the sam and the c out this is what we are having which is similar to that they just use xyz i just use a b and c right if you have questions uh, please note them down and you can ask me during the uh, live lectures okay another type of uh, combinational logic is encoder now it's actually the inverse operation of the decoder so like a two to four line decoder we have got two up inputs four outputs now we'll have d0 d1 d2 or let's do it other way around d3 d2 d1 d0 four outputs four inputs and two outputs a b okay so once again we are actually activating one of those at a time and one of the most used uh, encoder is priority encoder now what is priority encoder the outputs are activated based on the priorities so a1 and a0 which in this case a and b uh, it shows the encoded number n that corresponds to the highest priority input signal which is turned on what do we mean by that let's say in this case uh, d3 has the highest priority because uh, we just uh, cho chosen the uh, most significant bit one but it can be in any other one depending on the logic operation that you want to do so when d3 is the highest uh, priority when d3 is activated we don't really care what's happening with d2 d1 and d0 a1 and a0 will be activated when d2 is activated and d3 is zero then it's one zero when d1 is activated and d2 and d3 is uh, zero it's zero one and when d0 is activated and the rest are zeros it's zero zero and we also have none of them are activated that means don't care there's no valid output that is valid output uh, coordination over here now you can see that uh, this uh, table we have got lots of x's over there now those x's are actually um, it's like a condensed uh, truth table or the function table so like i said the higher index inputs have higher priority than the lower index inputs so d3 has the highest priority we can expand this uh, truth table how are we going to expand it actually rather than having this which is already given i can draw this expanded truth table now we have got d3 d2 d1 and d0 and we have got a1 and a0 let's use the same notation so if we have got four inputs that means we will have 16 possible combinations so 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 okay so as you can see we can have 15 possible combinations it's actually 16 for starting from zero now the one thing that we have mentioned over here depending on the priority we don't really care what's happening on the other ones okay now for example zero 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 as nothing is activated it's always xx and the output is not valid now when it is zero one
when it is zero one, so d zero as nothing nothing else is activated. D zero is one, so it's just zero one, and output is valid. Now one over here, which is d one. In this case, I'll show you both of those. Now, as d two and d three is not activated. And D1 is activated, we don't care about D zero's uh, values. So that's what we have got one X over here. So this is actually covering two possibilities, and that is one zero. Sorry, um, this is going to be uh, zero one, and this is going to be, sorry, I'll just use wild things over here. So zero zero is don't care, and zero one is uh, sorry d zero is activated so it's zero zero d one is activated it's zero one. Now if I move further, when d one is activated, which is d two is activated, which is this point. Now that means. I'm actually cutting out four possibilities because these are all going to be X's. As D2 is activated, we don't care about D1 and D0. So what will happen here? These are all going to be 1, 0, and output is valid. And output is valid on that one as well. And the final one, As D3 is activated and D3 has got the highest priority, we don't care about what's happening on these ones. They're all don't cares. Okay, these values, and we are getting one one output, and output is valid. This is just condensed in to four uh, possibilities that you can see that when this is one, the rest are all X's and so on. Now we can use this approach and we can uh, optimize it to find out what will be A1, A0 are going to be. Now, when we consider it for A1, this is what we are getting, right? But we are getting this for all of those. So not just for a single one, this is also zero one. This is one zero, this is one zero. Maybe I have to write this more tidied up. So this is one zero and this is one zero. They're all one zeros. And output is valid on all of those. And same applies to here. They're all one ones. Now, in order to get that, this is one one, this is one one, this is one one, one one, one one, one one, one one, and one one. So when I consider A1, I have to consider all these values. That means I have to create a K map containing 16 possibilities. So K map containing 16 possibilities. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. As you can see, we are using K maps a lot in order to simplify it. D3, D2, D1, D0. Right. Um, when everything is 0, it's x. When it is 1, it's 0. 2 is 0, 3 is 0. So the first one is x, 1 is 0, 2 is 0, 3 is 0. Then 4 is 1, 5 is 1, and the rest are all 1s. So that means these are all going to be 1s. OK, as based on this uh, A1 outputs. Now, this is going to give me a combination of these eight, which is D2, 
because D1 and D0 is all changing. And also the combination of other eight, which is going to be D3. So I can say that A1 is D2 or D3. Then I can do the similar for A0. which is this one. Zero, 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 one, 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 zero, 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 one, 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 zero. D3, D2, D1, D0. Once again, X, zero, one, one, four zeros, and the rest is one x 0 1 1 as you can see and the four zeros and the rest are all ones and based on this i can get these eight which is similar which is d3 and i can also get these two and these two which is four which will give me D2, D3, it's D2 prime, Not, oh, sorry, D1, this is D1, okay, and I can say that A0, it's going to be D3 or D2 prime D1, and the it valid is valid when d is zero or d is d is one or d two or d three so i can just write valid as d zero or d one or d two or d three i have got three expressions and i can implement the logical function of that